This is the latest offering from Prusa, the XL with up to five independent print heads. And it's freaking awesome. As a mechanical engineer, just watching the tools change and listening to the analog sounds of it all is very cool. It's also up to 10 times faster than a Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon with an AMS. There's really just one tiny little detail. I don't know who to recommend this to or the new Mark IV. Here's why I think Prusa might become the Blackberry of 3D printing and what I hope they do to prevent that. This video is sponsored by Factor. Prusa Research changed the consumer 3D printing landscape forever back in 2012. That's when Joseph Prusa released the now shamelessly copied open frame 3D printer design, along with an open kimono, uh, open source philosophy that helped accelerate development cycles across the 3D printing universe, not just with Prusa. Oh, and doing so while maintaining a pretty rock solid track record when it comes to reliability. I jumped on the bandwagon back in 2018 when I built my first i3 Mark III printer, and I've been a fan ever since. So much so that I built a freaking print farm using them. They're one of those brands that feels like a true community that cares about its members, even though as a company, they do north of $100 million every year. Enter the 800 pound panda in the room, Bamboo Lab. Two years ago, they burst into the scene with the iPhone of 3D printing, the X1. All of a sudden, the quirky, open source friendly Prusa machine seemed, well, lame. It's probably a lot like how Woody felt when Buzz Lightyear showed up. And exactly, like the BlackBerry physical keyboard seemed compared to the actual iPhone when it was launched in 2007. So what does this have to do with the XL? Why am I so confused by this thing? Well, in a vacuum, it's objectively awesome. Big print volume, independent heads for multicolor or multi-material prints, and finally, input shaping for fast-ish print speeds. We'll get into that. <sighs> but see, we're not in a vacuum. There are competitors out there lurking in the background hoping to gobble up Prusa's market share, and frankly, they're doing it at a scary pace. I've talked a lot about Bamboo Lab and the fresh innovation they brought to the scene, but one of the most important things they've done is turned a science experiment into an appliance that anyone can use. You see, before Bamboo Lab, if you wanted a truly hands-off experience with 3D printing, you had to shell out the big bucks for the industrial machines. Now you get all that for a couple hundred bucks. Oh, and the kicker is that it's literally two to three times faster than anything before it. It turns out that most people have short attention spans. Squirrel. You see, I think Prusa got caught with their pants down. They've enjoyed a healthy market share for a long time, and rather than continue to innovate and push boundaries, they instead chose to sit back and cruise. Pure speculation here, but I'm guessing that the Mark IV and the XL were released in a panic to give the appearance of relevancy to the 3D printing community, now gawking at the new kids on the block. The level of sophistication and speed of the new Bamboo Lab printers must have been overwhelming. I can imagine meetings at Prusa HQ where they just sat around the whole table looking at each other going, Fah. And I'm saying all this not because I think Prusa sucks. No, it's actually quite the opposite. As a loyal Prusa fan, I'm pissed that they aren't winning. Remember, they're the people's printer brand, the force behind the consumer 3D printing gold rush we all find ourselves in. The only other comparison would be MakerBot. You remember those crappy laser cut wood printers from back in 2008, 2009? They changed the game, kind of like how Factor changed the game for your nutrition. What would you say is the single most important aspect of your health? It's the food we put in our mouth. And to be honest, the standard American diet is kind of a dumpster fire. Factor is a service that delivers fresh, never frozen meals right to your doorstep that have been chef crafted and dietitian approved. But Travis, I could like totally make my own healthy food for like way cheaper. Okay, do it, go on. Or you like most people, myself included, that gets caught up in the pace of life and often finds myself out of time and choices for healthy meals. Factor makes it easy to eat healthy, plain and simple. And we can all agree that it's at least cheaper than takeout. It takes the decision making out of the equation and helps you save a ton of time and money in the process. I found that eating right with Factor always makes me feel energized during the week. But don't think that Factor is bland, healthy food. No, it's actually really good. You get to choose from over 30 options each week that change constantly so you're not stuck eating the same thing. Plus, if you're ever out of town, simply skip that week's delivery. It's really flexible. So give it a try by heading to factor75.com or use the link down below and use code SHOPNATION50. You'll get 50% off your first Factor box, plus get wellness shots free for life. That's right, you get two free wellness shots out of the three available flavors with every one of your box as long as you're a subscriber. That's factor75.com or use the link down below. Use code SHOPNATION50 to get 50% off your first Factor box, plus those free wellness shots. So going back to the XL, what's the issue you might ask? I'll say it this way. It's an amazing machine for no one. What I mean by that is that the competitive advantages of the XL cater to such a narrow niche that it's hard to make a case for someone to buy it, especially with the rather girthy price tag. So what are those competitive advantages you ask? Well, for starters, the size is cool. 
At just over 14 inches in each direction, you can print some pretty decent sized parts or a bunch of smaller ones. The segmented heat bed is also nice since you don't have to heat up the entire bed if you're printing just a small part. But the real competitive advantage is the multi-head setup for multi-color or multi-material prints. Look, I'll admit, it looks a little confusing and overly complicated at first glance. But having a head dedicated to a color or a material makes swapping between them extremely fast. Most people's first question is, what's the point of all the different print heads? You see, in a single head multi-material setup, the filament has to be unloaded, retracted, then the new filament is loaded and then purged until the previous material or color is gone. This all takes time, creates an opportunity for something to go wrong, and also creates a gigantic block of wasted material from all of that purging. The XL, on the other hand, doesn't have to do that whole dance every time. It just parks the head it was using, picks up a new one, purges a tiny amount of material, and gets right back to printing. The compounding effect of doing that during the course of a print means that the XL prints multicolor or multi-material parts faster and far more efficiently. But at what cost? This five-headed setup will run you $3,500 semi-assembled or $4,000 fully assembled. Ooh. While even a top-of-the-line Bamboo Lab X1C with an AMS costs less than half as much. Sure, the print volume's smaller. It's only 10 inches cubed versus 14 inches cubed. It's only got one print head, but it's still a very capable and fast machine. In fact, I took the same multicolor part and tested the overall print time on the XL versus the X1C. And as you can see, even with the less efficient material swapping, the XL wasn't that much faster. Certainly not enough to justify twice the price. So is it size then? Look, if you wanna talk about size, have you seen this behemoth sitting behind me? Yeah, just one quadrant of this thing is bigger than the XL. In fact, the print volume is 13 and a half times bigger than the Prusa XL. Crazy. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. I've already been playing around with it a little bit and I'll be showcasing some of the cool stuff I build with this. And look, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because size doesn't necessarily mean cost. This Elegoo Orange Storm Giga is the exact same price as the XL with a single print head. Okay, so if the multiple heads and multi-material printing is the competitive advantage, what if we used an extreme example? This is a four-color Benchy torture test. I just gotta say, I hate the Benchy. It just tethers 3D printing to toys and trinkets and I think it's stupid. What makes this four color benching an extreme test is because each color is only used for a very short amount of time during the print. This means the printer is forced to change and purge colors constantly. So if the XL is more efficient in doing so, it should show up here. And after slicing each of them, you can immediately see how drastic the difference is. The XL will print this part in about two and a half hours using just over 24 grams of material and making a staggering 455 tool changes. The normally speedy X1 carbon with the AMS takes almost 18 hours to print the same part using about 10 times more material. The bulk of that time and wasted filament is the AMS performing 521 changes and purges. Whoa. I decided to print it out on the XL and besides the purge tower falling over mid print, it did finish in the promised two and a half hours. Quality isn't amazing, but that's kind of the reason why they call it a torture test. I started the same print on the X1 Carbon, but quickly got bored of waiting and just killed the print. So in this case, the XL is the clear winner. This very specific case. It's kind of almost proving my point though. We had to go to such an extreme to find a reason to justify this printer. I mean, who out there is solely printing small multicolored parts? Maybe there's some, but it's a pretty small niche for this big XL. Going back to the BlackBerry analogy, the XL, and the Mark IV for that matter, feel like an incremental improvement on dated technology. I mean, are we really excited about getting a color touchscreen and a 32-bit processor? What is this, 1993? Do we get a free AOL CD-ROM with our purchase? I'm joking, of course, but also let me know if you're old enough to get that reference. Look, it's easy for me to sit here and judge decisions made by a wildly successful company like Prusa, but the truth of the matter is that the scale of Prusa means that they're a huge ship to turn. They have a ton of printers out there in the world and have a vested interest in maintaining and servicing those customers. I would imagine it'd be tough to say, hey, let's start over and build iPhones even though we have a factory tuned to build Blackberries. Which, by the way, Prusa put out a recent video showing their manufacturing setup, and it's pretty damn impressive. They've brought a ton of it in-house, even injection molding and PCB manufacturing. Personally, I think their supply chain got rocked during COVID and they're future-proofing a bit. Okay, so what does this mean for Prusa going forward? I think if they stay the course, they will disappear into obsolescence in a couple of short years. As a loyal fan, I would hate to see that happen. So here's what I'm hoping their recent releases actually mean. The Mark IV, a long planned upgrade to the tired Mark III design. They fixed all of the annoying things about the Mark III, but that's kinda it. Nothing exactly earth shattering. When Bamboo Lab came bursting through the wall like the Kool-Aid man, they panicked and threw it out in the world with the promise of fast printing, input shaping, which eventually came out 
many months after its release. The XL, on the other hand, I hope represents the true path forward and focus for Prusa, a core XY setup that has actual differentiation. Maybe that doesn't look like a five-headed Medusa in the future, but something that can compete with some of the other core XY printers now flooding the market. Look, there will always be a market for Prusa and for BlackBerry. I actually looked it up. You can still buy BlackBerry phones. Did you know that? But the size of the future market for Prusa will entirely depend on the direction the company focuses on. If they keep choosing expensive bed slingers, sad to say they have no chance. But if they can pivot, I really think they can keep a hold on their corner of the market. I hope so at least. I want to know what you think. What would Prusa have to do to stay competitive in today's 3D printing market? Leave those down in the comments. Also, full transparency, Prusa was kind enough to send me this XL to play around with. They were probably hoping for another review video, but whoops.